All right, this is block four over there, section four, Pershing and the AEF, uh, the lecture entitled uh, the AEF. Um, the AEF stands for the American Expeditionary Force. Uh, and the American Expeditionary Force was the force of soldiers that was going to cross the Atlantic Ocean, go to France, and help fight the First World War. Its commander is someone that we have seen before. This is General John J. Pershing. Uh, he was the guy that chased Pancho Villa around Mexico, uh, you remember from earlier in the block. Uh, he was America's um, most famous soldier, best soldier, uh, and he was put in command of all of the American armies uh, that were going to be in France. Uh, the first American troops reached Europe uh, in, early, in the spring of 1917, uh, the Rainbow Division being one of them. The Rainbow Division, in interestingly enough, uh, was commanded by Douglas MacArthur's father, whose name unfortunately was Arthur MacArthur. Um, he was in command of the uh, Rainbow uh, Red Division. But American troops did not start to arrive in France until uh, really um, the summer of 1918. That it takes the AEF a long time to get manned, supplied, trained, and shipped over uh, to Europe. And we can look here, this is um, what your typical World War I American soldier uh, went into battle with. You can see he has a, a tin helmet with a strap. This is an automatic uh, rifle. It shoots, I think it has a cartridge of about eight bullets before it needs a new cartridge. Um, you can see the bayonet on the side. Um, all soldiers in World War I wore gas masks. And you can see uh, the gas mask here. This is what that is. World War I used gas as a weapon for the first time in war. Uh, in the history of conflict, that both mustard gas and chlorine gas were used by both sides of the conflict, and it's not a particularly pleasant way to be killed. Um, the mustard gas burns the inside of your throat and your face, and the chlorine gas suffocates you uh, to death. Uh, so as soon as you know a shell, you know, with gas landed, everyone would start shooting gas, gas, and everyone would put on these gas masks. And if you were not in time. Uh, it can either kill you or terribly, terribly injure you. Um, and the gas mask is kept in a pouch at the front of the uniform. He's got a pack on his back and boots in the uniform. Uh, he carries grenades on his pack. Um, so this is your, this is, in American World War I soldiers uh, were known as Doughboys, which I can't write here for some reason. Um, but they got the nickname Doughboy. I don't know exactly why. Uh, but by the summer of 1918, this trickle of American soldiers had reached epic proportions in Europe. I also want you to understand something else that's important. By 1918, the European powers had been at war for three or four years. And they were really scraping the bottom of the manpower barrel. That the average British soldier by the end of the war was about five foot two, taken out of the factories of the British Midlands. He was not a healthy person, not a fit person. All the healthy, strong, and fit people had been killed in the earlier years of the war. So when, and a lot of European, a lot of Frenchmen and Englishmen especially, when they started seeing these American soldiers come over to Europe, these big farm boys from Nebraska and Kansas, and they were struck by just how big and strong looking and healthy looking they were. Um, after seeing, you know, these creatures of the trenches, these five foot two sickly British soldiers and these five foot three little skinny French soldiers that, you know, by the end of the war, the, the Allied powers were depending on. The, this influx of American blood and American uh, troops really um, increased the morale of Allied soldiers. Another kind of interesting thing that happened with Pershing and the AEF um, this is a picture of General Pershing at the grave of the Marquis de Lafayette. And if you remember from US-1, the Marquis de Lafayette was the 19-year-old French nobleman who came to the United States from France uh, and was one of General Washington's most trusted aides. And you should remember from US-1 that France was instrumental in the United States winning uh, the War of Independence, that in large part our independence was dependent on French assistance and French help in the war. And 140 years later, um, when American troops went to France to save the French from the Germans, one of the first places that General Pershing went to was the tomb of Lafayette. And he was reported to have said, as he stood there, he said, Lafayette, we have returned. Um, and these American troops returned 
uh, to save France in the First World War.